Good morning, faithful listener. You are listening to the Bible Explained podcast, where the Bible gets explained. So grab your cup of coffee and stay tuned as we read through the book of John. Hey, faithful listeners, this is Jen with the Bible Explained podcast. Happy Thursday. Today, we're going to talk about John chapter 15, verses 17 through 27. We're going to keep talking about how Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. We're also going to be talking about, we're going to keep talking about love today and also about persecution today. So let's continue talking about John chapter 15. And today I'm going to be reading 17 through 27 out of the W.E.B. version of the Bible. I command these things to you that you may love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it has hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, since I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But they will do all these things to you for my name's sake, because they don't know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have had sin. But now that they have, but now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I hadn't done among them the works which no one else did, they wouldn't have had sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened so that the word may be fulfilled, which was written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Psalm 35, verse 19. When the counselor has come, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. You will also testify because you have been with me from the beginning. So I grew up in a really conservative church. Uh, It was called an IFB church, Independent Fundamental Baptist. And actually, I just did a YouTube video about my sister and my brother-in-law and me are escape from the IFB denomination because the IFB denomination in some ways is more cult-like than church-like. So we all made our escape from the IFB church and my sister and my brother-in-law tell their testimony about that and how difficult it was and the shunning they received and all sorts of stuff. So that's actually on YouTube. But my point with all that was not just to give a YouTube commercial to you guys, but also to tell you (laughs) That when I was in the IFB church, we used to sing this song called The Comforter Has Come. Okay. And it's like, the comforter has come, the comforter has come, the holy one of heaven, the sun. I don't remember it all, but it was called The Comforter Has Come. And (laughs) when I was a kid, I truly did not know what that meant. I was like, The Comforter Has Come. I was like, oh, and I, I like, I literally imagined a big giant like comforter from a bed like getting wrapped around me and that's what I thought I was singing about was this big old giant comforter like wrapping around me and (laughs) it wasn't until a few years later that I realized that a comforter is not just like something that goes on a bed but it's also like it's a descriptor of somebody who brings comfort. I didn't understand that. But (laughs) depending on the version you're reading today, verse 26 will say, when the comforter has come. Now the W.E.B. says counselor. But to me, that's just a funny story of something that I thought when I was a little kid. But anyway, verse 17 says, I command these things to you that you may love one another. So we talked a lot about love actually on Tuesday, if you guys haven't caught that episode yet. Um, It was almost like a precursor to this episode where we discussed what love really looks like and a lot of people, how they twist what the greatest commandment is. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. And even Christians will twist that and say, no, the greatest commandment is to love your neighbor. But that is absolutely untrue. And I actually said that I believe that that's a lie from Satan is that uh, twisting of scripture. Because when you twist that, that can be very damaging. Because loving God always has to come first before you can love somebody else. Because otherwise you're gonna have no clue how to love somebody else. You're gonna have no clue whatsoever. So you have to love God first because if you love God, you're going to love everything that God has to say. You're gonna love the scripture. You're gonna love the truth. So you have to love the Father first in order to be able to truly love 
another person. But loving other people is very, very important. It is the second greatest commandment. We have to love other people. It is a requirement in scripture. If we want to follow Jesus, we have to have love in our hearts. And actually, Paul says that, um, you know, all the we could do all the serving in the world, but if we don't have love for other people, then it really is nothing. Love is very, very important. So we have to love others. And I went into what that looks like on Tuesday with evangelism, serving other people, um, helping others, whatever it might be. But in verse 18, Jesus basically says we have to love other people, but we cannot expect love in return. Isn't that crazy? I command these things to you that you may love other, love one another. But if the world hates you, <laughs> you know, that it has hated me before it has hated you. So Jesus commands us to love regardless of the fact that we are going to be hated for our love. Because Christians have what is truly love. We have love. And there are so many people out there in the world that are like, no, you're not a real Christian if you don't love in the way that I tell you to love. And if you don't have tolerance for this or that or anything else, or if you if you tell me that I am living a sin, that is not loving. You are not a real Christian. There are so many people who will say that to you. That is not true. And you don't have to listen to that. Don't listen to that, actually. Just continue to do what scripture says to do. And Jesus says, when you continue to do what scripture says to do, when you truly love other people, like actually, the world's going to hate you. And that sounds so like, it sounds like an oxymoron. I don't know if that's the right word. I was going to say oxymoron, but <laughs> it's just like, it sounds so twisted, right? Yeah, it's just so twisted that when we show the love that we have in Christ for other people, that they're going to hate us in return. Now, don't get me wrong. The church has done a lot of damage. I mean, I just talked about the IFB church just at the beginning of this episode. And that church did a lot of damage, not just to me and my sister and my brother-in-law, but tons of other people that have gone through that denomination. So yeah, there are definitely denominations of churches out there that are destroying people. And Jesus said that was going to happen. It said that God's kingdom was going to become like a mustard tree that grows up huge, like way up into the sky, basically. And it says that ravens are going to come and nest in it. So the mustard tree, of course, is an analogy of the church growing so big and so tall and so fruitful, right? But then these ravens, <clears throat> which come in to destroy the fruit and eat of it, they're going to come in and hide themselves among the branches, and these ravens, of course, are the people and the churches masquerading as Christian, but not actually doing what scripture says to do. And so, of course, the world is going to see churches and denominations like that and automatically think that all Christians are evil because of these few that are not Christians, but are claiming Christianity. The world is going to see those kinds of churches and um, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. I told you guys, every single time I, I do a podcast episode, I lose my voice. I'm telling you, I don't even know what's going on. Okay, <clears throat> the world is not going to like the church very much when uh, false churches have popped up in the name of Christianity, in the name of Jesus. But that doesn't mean that we don't go out and still spread love the way God tells us to spread love. We are going to be hated. We are going to be lied about. We are going to be stigmatized. But regardless, we still have to continue to spread this love. And uh, Jesus says that even though the world is going to hate you for some of these things, just know that it hated me first. It's because they actually hate Jesus. That's why the world does this. That's why the world does not like Christians. It's not because of the Christian per se. It's about the Christian's message of sin and repentance. The world doesn't want to hear about sin and repentance because if the world hears about sin and repentance, they have to admit that something's wrong. And people would rather live in a lie many times than admit that something is wrong and turn away from it. People want to live however they want to live and whatever they think is right. And it's hard to turn away from those things, for sure. I'm just going to keep going, even though I'm losing my voice. Um, it says, the world hates you 
but know that it has hated me before it has hated you. But if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, since I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So yeah, I mean, the world loves its own, that's for sure. You're not going to be persecuted if you're going along with every new idea and every single thing that's out there. But if you stand for the truth, the world is going to hate you, unfortunately, which is so crazy. It's so crazy that truth is so hated. And I mean, even Jesus, he calls the the counselor in verse 26, he calls him the spirit of truth. That is who the Holy Spirit is. And he tells us what the truth is. He is the best counselor out there. <laughs> so the world's going to hate us. It says, if we were part of the world, the world wouldn't hate us. But since we aren't part of the world, the world does hate us. But remember the word that I said to you from John 13, verse 16, a servant is not greater than his master or his Lord. So because Jesus was persecuted because the world hated Jesus way back when, they're still going to hate him. And because we are following Jesus, we're also going to be hated. And you guys are probably like, this is a really uplifting podcast episode. <laughs> Don't worry, it's, it, it'll get better, I promise. Okay, it says, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Okay, kind of the same concept. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. So people who believe in Jesus are going to accept us. Those who love Jesus will accept other believers. They will accept the truth. They're going to accept the spirit of truth. So it's it's either or. You're either going to be loved or you're going to be hated. Now, the bit of encouragement that I can get give, though, is that I do think that there are a lot of people quietly on our side. It even actually says that there were many Pharisees that were on Jesus' side, but they were so scared to stand up and talk about Jesus that they never professed him publicly, but they were still on Jesus' side and still truly believed in him, but they were afraid. So there are definitely people out there who are afraid, but believe in Jesus. They're afraid, but they're scared to spread the the message of their faith. And I can understand that. It's it's hard to rock the boat. I'm also very scared. <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys. Um evangelism is not really my thing if I'm being 100% honest. Um I I'm not that kind of person. But my pastor actually it's really funny on Sunday, he talked about how evangelism doesn't have to be like this big thing where you, you know, state the gospel message to somebody every single time. It can be like Something really simple, just like asking them a question to get them to think about Christianity or um, mentioning your church or something like that. And if they're interested, they'll keep talking to you about it. And so it doesn't have to be this big elaborate thing every single time. But the point my pastor was making was that it can be simple and that helps you get practice so that you can do more next time. Because evangelism is really hard. It really is. It's very hard to talk to people about your faith. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not really an evangelist. It's hard for me. But what you can do is just start out very small. Like if you know somebody at your job or if you, you're out with a friend or something like that and a topic comes up, maybe you can just ask them a little bit about their faith or something along those lines. But regardless... I encourage anybody out there who's listening, who's kind of scared to express their faith, just start small and practice a little bit. And over time, it'll begin to get a little bit easier so that you can start saying more things and more things and helping people like that. So I do think there are a lot of people out there who are Christians who are very afraid to talk about their Christianity, but we need to not be ashamed of the gospel and we need to practice telling it, practice telling our faith to other people. But moving forward in verse 22, Jesus says, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have had sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. So in other words, because the people of Jesus's time period now knew about Jesus, now knew about God's son and saw all the miracles that were being done, these people had no excuse for rejecting Jesus, is what he is saying here. He's saying they now have sin on them because they know about Jesus, they know about God's Son, and they still rejected Jesus. And because they rejected Jesus, in the end, they're rejecting the Father. 
they are rejecting the Father because Jesus is the only way to the Father. And that's because Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for our sins. We can't get to heaven on our own. We can't sacrifice for ourselves. We can't do it. Jesus had to do it for us. And so Jesus is our Savior and we have to recognize him as our Savior. He saved us from the wrath of God. He saved us from hell. And so Jesus is the way to the Father. Through Jesus, through believing in Jesus' gift to us and recognizing him as our Savior and following after him, we now can get close to God the Father. And Jesus says in verse 23 and 24, He who hates me hates my Father also. If I hadn't done the works among them, which no one else did, they wouldn't have had sin. But now they have seen and it hated both me and my Father. So the world hates Jesus and they hate the Father as well. It's not just Jesus they're hating. It's not just you and me that the world is hating. They're hating God the Father, the God who made them and made the entire earth, the only God, Yahweh. They are rejecting God who made them, God who is so insanely powerful. He also can give us so many amazing blessings like peace and happiness and fulfillment and purpose here on earth. And the people of the world are just rejecting all of this. It's very sad. This is why we do need to be better evangelists. And testimonies about Jesus and what he's done for you are very powerful. And speaking of testimonies, it says, When the counselor is come, in verse 26, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me, and you will also testify because you have been with me from the beginning. So yeah, testimonies are really powerful, and, and Jesus says that we will testify about him, what he has done in our own lives. So really, that is the comfort in all of this. Yeah, we're going to be persecuted for sure. Like Christians are going to be persecuted. And right now here in America, that looks like screaming and insults and cancel culture and, um, you know, alienation, all sorts of stuff like that. But the the hope in all of this is that we're going to have a testimony of what Jesus did for us. And that testimony is going to help people. Our testimony of Jesus is extremely powerful. The spirit of truth testifies about Jesus to us. And then when we change our lives through the testimony of the Holy Spirit teaching us about Jesus, we are going to testify about what Jesus has done in our own lives. And, you know, the, I've actually been really into testimonies recently. I think I've said that like 20 times now in the past week. And I really have. I've been very interested in hearing people's testimonies. And actually, last night I heard a great one about a woman who was raised in just total poverty and uh, was kicked out of her house with a baby, a one-year-old baby at the age of 18, and she was on the streets, but she turned her life over to Christ, and by age 20, she owned a house. And so it's like powerful testimonies like that, where like God just comes and helps you. And you could just tell this woman's life was totally changed by her faith. She had nothing before, then she had Jesus, and she had everything, everything that she could want. And it was just such a powerful and beautiful testimony. And that's what Jesus does for us. He gives us like this fulfillment and this peace, something that the world just cannot give us. And that woman in poverty, you know, she was on the streets and before that, and she was trying to find love and acceptance through, you know, being on the streets and being in gangs and through the love of this one guy that she thought that he loved her. And um, she was looking for love in all the wrong places, but it wasn't until after she found Jesus that she was able to testify how much love she really felt from her father, her father in heaven. So that's the comfort, is that we don't have to live in the world. <laughs> the world is really cheap. The world does not satisfy. It does not give us the fulfillment that we crave. Only Jesus can give us that. And that's the peace in all of this. And in fact, it's worth being persecuted to be a follower of Christ and to experience that peace and fulfillment that you have as being an adopted kid of the father who made you. Guys, I really hope that this episode meant something to you today. And you know, if you are struggling with feeling purposeless and you know, that's just something that's really weighing heavy on you right now and you just don't know what your next steps are moving forward, 
then consider checking out my book, Out of the Mire, which actually has a lot of my own personal testimony in that book, but it's an eight-week study on the life of Joseph the slave in the Old Testament and just showing how, you know, Joseph was in such a dark and terrible place. You know, he was a slave, but yet God used him in such amazing and incredible ways in the end. And it's because Joseph did not give up. So check out that book that is linked in the description of this podcast episode. Faithful listeners, I will see you all tomorrow for our last episode of season five. And I'll be moving into season six on Tuesday. Don't forget, I'm taking Monday off just to prepare for season six. Alrighty, guys. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Happy listening and God bless.